everybody else, how everybody else feels is none of your business, right? It's, it's your business, how you feel and how you choose to respond to the world as opposed to react to the world. I think that's a really big piece that I want people to understand the difference of because we don't even understand when we're reactive. Right. You get it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Awaken Your Relationships. Why are we here? Because we work things out or we act it out and we do it through our money through our health and through our relationships. So I'm the money chick and Rita is helping us here on the relationship side. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about how do we create a reality around us by how we feel. That's like our, uh, it's taking the bull by the horns. Your feelings are the one directing it and which way it's going. Can you tell I was just in Texas? <laughs> Take the bull by the horns. <laughs> I'm um, picturing you in a in a cowboy hat riding a steer now. You can't put those <laughs> visuals in my head. Oh my gosh. And and everybody, please don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell because we're gonna help you get to a life that you love. We're gonna get now you. Now you've of your got family. me thinking, now you've got me thinking, ride a horse, save a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Because I like to have fun. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I do too. The way I want to feel today is like stellar. I am so done with not feeling like a million bucks every flipping day. Right? Right. Right. I've been working and, on I've been working on an energy healing uh, for May and it's all around boundaries. And so I did like a three-part master class on boundaries and then an energy healing where I take people I amp them up and regulate, amp up and regulate and do that a couple times. Mm -hmm. So I've really been exploring the idea of boundaries and talking a lot about boundaries and what healthy boundaries are and what unhealthy boundaries are. And one of the main distinctions is when we set a boundary, it's really for ourselves. We're saying, I am no longer willing to not feel wonderful every single day. Mm. I am no longer willing to live a life where I'm hijacked by other right. people's emotions. You know, things like that. And so if if we aren't feeling good every day, it's our, the only one who can do something about it is ourselves. Right. And you know what? Because everybody else, how everybody else feels is none of your business, right? It's, it's your business, how you feel and how you choose to respond to the world as opposed to react to the world. I think that's a really big piece that I want people to understand the difference of because we don't even understand when we're reactive. We right. You get it. Well, and, and I've been following my astrological chart because my 50th birthday is coming up on Sunday. And so being as metaphysical as I am, mm -hmm. I really, I've been literally like, what can I get aligned? What rituals can I do? What foods can I eat? What, yeah. you know, what am I going to do to, to, uh, go into my goddess state or whatever. <laughs> so, um, I'm even going to King spa and run around naked with a bunch of women. So that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> but feel good. It, <laughs> so, right. So I've been, you know, I've been thinking about this whole 50th thing coming up. And, uh, so I've been following my astrological chart and the last week and a half has just been blowing up for everybody. Yeah. All of the issues and all of the everything. And I'm like, wow, this is weird and auspicious, you know, the, uh, but, but if you look around everyone I've I've been talking to, it's like, it fell apart. I was, and I was telling you about the article. I, I was doing Yahoo on my phone or whatever. And it comes up and says, man dies of heart attack, bur digging hole to bury girlfriend. He just strangled in, you know, he was found in their backyard, digging the hole with her strangled. I mean, it's just, this is the level <laughs> that people are getting to. Well, so here's the thing. And here, here's what I understand to be true is that every single person I know. So like yesterday, my nanny um, resigned and I asked her the question that I ask every single one of my clients. I said, what does your heart want? Because she, I could tell when she was in her heart for what she needed for herself versus her mind. And, and I said to her, I said, what does your heart want? And she goes, I just want to be home and like 
grow my own food and like she, she's 70 she's tired she's ready right oh yeah right? She, and and bless her heart and but every single person i know right now is being driven to you have to do what makes your heart happy now so many of us have been taught that that is selfish but it's like because crazy is going to get crazier Right. And it's going to be harder and harder to choose compassion and open heartedness and joy because people are going to have more um, aggressive, more button pushing, more unconscious behavior. So, I mean, so, so the energy is going to ramp up. We're all going to be triggered. And if you don't learn the lesson now that the only way to be happy is to drop into your heart and be happy, mm -hmm. then it's just going to get worse. You're going to suffer more. Like you say, the suffering cycle Every time an astrological event happens, everybody's, you know, every full moon, you're now going to have another mini war. Mm -hmm. You have to figure it out how to find happiness no matter what's happening around you. I was just watching two scientists on Greg Braden's channel um, the other day that said um, this is whether you look at the indigenous tribes history or if you look at what happens every 5,132 years in the Earth cycle, it's a 36 year transition. And that 5,132nd day was December 21st, 2012. So it's 18 years before that, and it's 18 years after that. So it's at the pinnacle. Then you have this geological event which means that 2030, I think this is all going to unpack. And it was interesting, all these scientists that were talking on his channel too. Oh yeah, I've about... seen all, I've, I, and I've been following that myself. So, I mean, it's not like you're right. not dialed in. This is what they have, all of the cultures have been saying. Right, so this is, and it's not only the cultures, it's also scientists are saying that mm -hmm. too. So, mm -hmm. But it's, so in that eight year time frame. Crazy is going to get crazier. We are all going to be forced more to find our happiness from within. You know, it's what I call in my books, real wealth, right? You have to find that place of real wealth, real true happiness, because working hard and doing things to please bosses or relationships or kids or family members, it, it, that doesn't matter. Like you have to go inside and really find that happiness and and understand that those things are going on outside of you but don't participate and don't hook in you know well, and 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 a distinction i really want to make is you know if you stand at the edge of the universe and you look at everything that's going on it's filled with wavelengths wavelengths of light of sound of radio waves of everything we live in this ocean of 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 waves and we're being buffeted around by this stuff all the time. Yep. Our buttons are always being triggered. Other people's buttons are always being triggered. Right. And you learn sometimes with very painful lessons that when you've tried everything else, the only thing left is to try love mm. and to try care. Yeah, love but, And that includes so yourself, well. not right. pity, not you know and not envy not those kind of things but but love for yourself and love for your other human being mm -hmm. because then because we're so connected that if we don't raise the vibration of the whole community by letting go of our judgments and by cultivating a compassionate heart we're going to go down with the sinking ship well and this is where you have to monitor and measure your own feelings right? Which is what we're really wanting people to get from today's video is the fact that you literally are the creator of your life by what you feel. And that's why if you feel sadness or you have to work through something, it's better to be in your own energy and do that so that you don't create more of it by projecting it onto others. And then you swirl and you create more and, and then away it goes. Well, and people miss the important thing you're supposed to do when you feel sad. If you saw a child or a puppy or a duck you know, feeling sad, you would probably go to it and try to give it some sort of care love. and compassion and right. love. 
And you have to do the only answer when you're feeling angry, scared, sad, irritated, you're eating too much, you're eating too little, you're starving yourself, whatever. The only answer is to give yourself love. Mm. Sometimes that looks like going for a walk. Sometimes it looks like having great sex, but it's whatever makes you feel loved. Right. And it's funny, like yesterday when I think about, so lots of things came up and I could have done a lot of emotional projecting yesterday as to the why as my nanny decided to resign because there were lots of reasons to do that. And I just said to her, I go, well, why don't we talk about this? Let's go have a nice lunch. And so we went to a really good farm to table organic restaurant and ate a place that has anti-inflammatory diet. I was like, we sat outside in Chicago in the nice weather and had that chat and um, and just worked through like, it's okay. Everything is okay because if she chooses herself, then she'll be on the planet longer because she's taking care of a number one, right? We're and getting called, we're getting called to have grace for right. people. Mm -hmm. We're getting called so strongly to give grace to everyone we can. Yeah, we really are. And so it's about as you, these feelings come up to really, I keep telling everybody this and, and Rita, you're the one that's taught me this is that you have to just calm your nervous system. If you don't know how to get out of that cycle, you really have to just go down and calm that nervous system, whatever that takes. I don't care if it takes, um, you know, unplugging your phone for 24 hours, like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna turn it off because it's okay. It's okay for you to disappoint people. It's okay for you not to be there. Like I remember yesterday, so I wound up with this killer headache because my all the energy went to my head. And I was trying to think through like, how do I now do this? Like seriously? And then I just decided, you know what? I, I'm not gonna do this last client appointment today because I need to just, you know? And so I went to the grocery store and made sure I had all the food for the kids and then I became, I call it the Murph mobile. I just drove around for six hours, taking them to dance class and baseball and basketball and other baseball and track and field. <laughs> but that's what we do. Right. And yep. as long as, cause that is a healthy way to process through that, as opposed to something that could be more destructive and people are destructing things all over the place because they don't realize yeah, and it's, the, and the, it's, are the barometer. Right. And it, it's crazy for me because we will choose to blow up our own life before we will choose to go outside and sit on the ground for 15 minutes. I don't even think some people realize that they're blowing up their lives. I, on some level, I think they do because otherwise they wouldn't, but I think they might as like a hangover component, see how they did it. But sometimes people are so stuck in the story of like, yeah. like the blame and the point and the thing, like there's so much pointing of the finger out there these days. It's like, I had a mentor tell me when I was 22 years old, every time you point your finger at somebody else, you got three more pointing back at yourself. And I've always thought about that. So like when I went to go be like, eh, cause that's a projection, right? Something unrest in you, you're wanting to blame the government, blame my employer, blame my family, blame the relationship you're in. You are the creator of your life. It's not about the other. You created that. Right. So if right? you want to be, if you want to feel compassionate and open hearted and generous, you have to choose to feel compassionate and open hearted and generous. Mm -hmm. And you have to want to be, to surround yourself with people who are compassionate and open-hearted and generous. And what's going to happen so is true. the vibe that you give off is what's going to attract the right people to you. Right. And, and right. generosity and compassion isn't, can't net be measured through action because sometimes the smallest, easiest, most unconscious actions do the greatest healing. Mm, that's so true. You know, so you just have to. Kind of like time, present. right? Like just being kind of like what time yeah like give yeah. up your time mm -hmm. you know like this morning i you know it wasn't ideal for me to start making waffles at 7 15 in the morning when they had to be at school at 8 15. but i sat there you know teaching my son like i'm like hey you want to learn how to and, and he's like measuring out the flour and he's doing this 
but it was good. It was it was just the time that I spent with him doing that, right? Being in a place of compassion. Because you and I both know people who've tried to teach this stuff and they haven't had patience. And so, yeah, the time was great, but you'd really rather have learned it on your own. Totally. <laughs> totally. Right. So, I mean, it's it's coming from that heart space overall. Right. So that the action, whatever it is, is is a loving action. Correct. And But it starts with coming from a loving feeling that you have. Alan Watts, one of my favorite philosophers from the 60s, he was you know, into debauchery and lived on a houseboat and great, great philosopher of Asian medicine. And he would say, love anything. You have to start with anything. Love a piece of chocolate. Love you know, a sunrise. Love your new haircut. But you want to generate a feeling of love in your heart and right. then just keep feeding that. So it doesn't right. matter what you start with, but you have to start with the desire to feel a sense of love. Right, right. And no matter whether it's something that you want, that you naturally love, or even if it's something that's like your nemesis. <laughs> yeah, in fact, right? those are, of course, our biggest teachers, right? For sure. I tell people who come to me, I say, well, the most painful moments in your life will be the greatest opportunities for the fastest change. Right, so right. when they come, when you can stay steady, when you can keep your little boat upright, right. then you will be able to get to the other side. You'll go, wow, what a rush. Mm. And you'll be in a better place. Right. But if you let yourself capsize right, and right. you know, you're, you're not going any further, you're stuck in the same spot, never able to get past it. So, so sure. you have to make the decision that I choose joy. Period. I don't care what anybody else is doing or what anybody else is saying or what they say to me or what they do to right. me or how they mess with my life right. or, or what's going on. I choose joy. When you talk about Mother Teresa, they said she could find beauty anywhere she went. In the middle right. of the slums, she would find the one flower that was coming up amidst the stones and go look at it and look at its beauty and its setting. I actually do a lot of that kind of thing, too. But she, she could find the beauty in things. It wasn't about pity. It was about sharing a sense of love with your community by feeling loving. Reality is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. You know, I, I said that to one of my brothers. Um, so I have 11 brothers and sisters. And um, I said to one of them, I'm going, you know, our childhood just kind of prepped us for everything that's going on right now. Like, we didn't have the material stuff. We didn't have anything but each other and time. And th we, we had a blast. Like we, <laughs> there, were, right. there were certainly challenges, but God, not a one of us like hated our childhood. Like we all like, we, we had enough kids to always play a ball game. We always like, I, I, even if you had to use a stick and you made your own ball, like it, we didn't know that you you didn't like there was nothing outside of ourselves that made us happy when we were children you had mm -hmm. to find that within yourself so it was very interesting how we had a childhood that just prepared us for that already um and it's fascinating to me to see that how that tool of just growing up that way you know 40 years ago is exactly what the world needs to go to today you know mm -hmm. finding that happiness within no matter what the job situation looks like you know like i had someone the other day um they were really uh, they're struggling at work and that you know it's the relationships whether it's personal relationships or work relationships she's put herself in positions where um she just can't show up enough right like she shows up she shows and she's and her body's starting to break down and i said what do you think? So she, she, she shedded the personal relationship, right? And then all of a sudden it started to rear its head how it was in her work relationship. And I'm like, because if you don't have boundaries in one, you're not going to have boundaries in another. Right. And so I said, you know what you need to do is I said, you need to just go quit your job. She goes, what? I go, you don't like the work you do. I said, you have enough space. I said, you know what? This is just about self-love and get her to a place to where she could not feel like beat up day in and day out you know because she doesn't like the work that she's doing she doesn't like the place she has to go to for work she doesn't like so it's like at what point is enough enough 
You know, when it feels to me, it feels to me like the feminine energy has been asked to take on this enormous burden over so many years of filling in the gaps for everybody else. Mm. You know, whether it's feminine energy in a man or feminine energy in a woman, but but it's been imbalanced, right. mm -hmm. you know, and that feminine energy hasn't been supported enough in order to do what it needs to to balance things out. Right. Instead, it's had to do their own job, plus the job of the father you know, or well, plus the job of the male energy. So don't you think that it's about the fact that um, women have not chose to step into what their true power really is? I agree completely. And and, and I, I actually yeah. said this to a couple of young ladies when I was in Texas and I said, they worked at the bookstore and I said, they they, all, they said something and, and I responded back and they're like, wait a minute, you know about this stuff? It was like astral, I'm like, oh yeah. And they're like, well, what do you think about this? And I just said to them, I go, ladies, no one else is the problem but us women and she goes the one was like what and oh I go, yeah it's i mean if there's we, fault it's our fault for not standing up for our rights for self-respect and self-love and choosing and then when we did step in we negotiated ourselves a way to be masculine as opposed to being in our magic which is our feminine well that's and, because feminine isn't taught how to negotiate and in fact, we've got, you know, blocks against, I was thinking about this the other day, the word negotiate, because I was like, you know what, I need to take some good negotiation classes because women aren't taught to advocate for themselves or even how to step into those conversations. And so we negotiate everything away because we don't even know what we're doing most of the time. We right, think we're right. supposed to be people pleasers or make everybody happy, but then we turn around after we've made everybody happy. And as Oprah says, well, if you do things to make people happy, to like you, they're going to like you and they're going to want more. No matter how much you give, they'll it they'll more take never it ends. dry. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to what we're talking about today. It's like, well, if more never ends, then you get crabby or cranky or sad or whatever. Well, those are the feelings then that are creating your reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How you feel is what you see in the world. And then what you see in the world is what you behave around, your choices are made around, mm -hmm. and then you right. actually create it in the world because right. you keep behaving as if it's true. Right. So. so if you're afraid of everybody, then you're behaving as if the world is a is never safe for you. And then you make choices so that you're so in true. situations so the world is never safe for you. Right. And safety is the key that if you don't feel safe, you cannot expand and grow and manifest. Right. You have to feel safe. It's and the way you feel it. safe is by protecting yourself and being aware of your areas of weakness and your areas of strength and being kind around those. Mm. Stop trying to be everything so true. because you're not everything. You're, you're an abundance of gifts, but you're not every single gift that ever existed. <laughs> so, I'm not. No. <laughs> you're not. You know, so you have to pick and choose the ones that you like and be okay and patiently work on the ones that you wish you were better at. Right. Yeah. And it's that that energy of patience and compassion that affects the people in your life. Mm -hmm. When people think about having an appointment with me, they automatically start relaxing, generally speaking. Well, because the work already starts before you ever get there. Exactly. Because you're exactly. choosing to step into it. It's kind of like I'm choosing to move. I don't really know exactly where I'm moving, but I am choosing that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's I'm the vibe that I'm giving off that that gives them that experience so that now they're already calming down regulating feeling good because of the vibe that i gave off mm -hmm. so if if i'm an antenna if i'm a, sending signals around love and compassion when people get in my field which is measurable further than eight miles mm -hmm. if they get within that field they will entrain to my vibe and become more compassionate understanding yep. and also start to come closer to me yep. and want to support and help that and become a closer community. Yep. So our responsibility is to send off the right vibe, not lip service to it, not, oh, I love everybody. And then talk about people behind their backs. Oh, that drives me crazy. You know, you that know? happened with my, one of my daughters, she came out of school yesterday and she was talking all about how 
the group and this one girl is going to be, I go, Bridge, you need to just understand that you don't know who said, she said, whatever. And you just need to step there in your power and say, you know what? I don't really care what any of them say. And she goes, you know what? You're right. I go, Bridge, all you do is pull yourself down to a vibration that is not going to help you manifest the life you want to have. I go, you can stay stuck in this tape recorder with these chicks that are just like nipping at you all the time. Like they're piranhas. Trying. They're like piranhas taking Ugh. little bites out of you until there's nothing left and they don't right. care. Right. And I go, Bridge, you just go be your bad self and like rock it. I go, because you are that. You are the kid that you just placed 12th out of 100 kids because you're that fast of a runner. You're the one that's in the dance competitions that are way higher than the age group that you should be in. I go, it's just who you are. I go, do not dumb yourself down. And I said, and you know what? You're their teacher. You're teaching them actually how to, because I said, if you feel the feelings that they feel, because all that stuff is just unrest inside of themselves. I go, Bridge, let's talk about what you want to create in life as opposed to this piranha stuff going on in your class. And we switched it like that. And she's like, well, mom, how about this? And it was like, okay, I want to talk to her about that stuff. But it's unbelievable how when people, other people have these feelings. So let's just say you're experiencing other people having those feelings and you just have to observe it. You have to get to a place where you can just observe and not have it be yours. Like don't take it on and process it for them. Right. And the, and the, and what happens is when we're in somebody's space, so, so they've done research where angry people get assaulted by strangers more often than people who are not because the vibe they give off triggers people who are already dealing with anger management. Oh, right. Very cool. Wow. That's good research. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have to be very careful about our unconscious patterning. I was watching the extended version of what the bleep and they were talking about religion and how even people who've never been in church have certain religious beliefs and ideals, mm. you know, even though they'd be like, and my parents never went to church and I, because it's part of our culture, but it's not, doesn't make it true just because it's part of your culture. Right. You know? And so we're so indoctrinated in, in these subconscious messages that we're constantly being told about scarcity and money and, and not enough and women don't matter and you don't matter. And, you know, to keep us in this place right. and you have to actively question it. Everything that you think, sometimes you have to say, all right, is this truly in my highest and best good? Hmm. Right. Filter it through your own heart, through your own filter. And it's okay if that takes you time to do that. That's the other component. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, you can step away and allow yourself to find what that is for you. And it doesn't matter what somebody else's timing is. Right. But it's so scary because our body tells us, our body reminds us of when we were four or five or six and how we were helpless and there wasn't anything we can do. And so the body goes back to that fighting for its life. And you have to literally, it's feel like you're, you're going up Mount Everest, mm. you know, to, to break those chains of your old patterns, of your old habits, of your old right. feelings and thoughts. And you have to be diligent and on top of it because it's an addiction. Right. If you're going to break free, you have to break your addiction to your chemicals of emotion, your stress, right. and you have to break your addiction to your negative thinking. Right. Yeah. Because that cortisol is no joke. That cortisol addictive. through that system. And, and, you know, I remember one of the greatest gifts that I got from the man that I'm dating today is, um, uh, I think you're addicted to the drama. And I was like, there's no way I want this drama. You know, when he was referring to my ex-husband and then all of a sudden I realized it, it even correlated into the way that I worked out. It was like everything I was doing was because my body was actually addicted to the cortisol. And as soon as I yes. recognize that, all of a sudden now I'm doing yoga flow classes as opposed to run walks and hit runs on my Peloton, you know? So I'm doing 
all the things like eating alkaline food as opposed to acidic food, all things to lower the cortisol that helps the nervous system get in alignment. So then when something comes at me, I then can just re react, not react, but respond in a state of neutrality. And so I can do it now in the moment of processing those feelings, you know, and right. And, up. and, and it doesn't end there. You know, a lot of times people don't work, go through their healing stuff because they think there's nothing on the other side. Mm. But when I work with someone, you know, I'm like, we have to get this stuff healed as fast as possible because then you start nourishing your brain. Then you start, you know, fruiting and bearing lemons and apples and, you know, raspberries. Well, you become and, the creator of your life. Right. And so it's like, okay, yeah, there's this healing piece, but let's clear this out of the way as fast as we can. Let's see if we can do it in three months or less. And right. if we can, then you can, you know, the rest of your life, you can put on the trajectory you want, you know, instead okay. of dragging your heels to you know, to get help, dragging your heels to work through this stuff. And then 10 years later, you're still in the same marriage, having the same bad experiences, having the same haircut, the same everything. Nothing's you changed. You know, it's so funny that you say that because I talked to a new referral yesterday. She literally explained my entire life, but she stayed in the marriage till the guy died in his 60s. Whereas I got out in my forties and it was like, I couldn't imagine, could not imagine 30 more years of gaslighting and, um, holding, holding it, uh, in a way that wasn't in alignment with myself because that has nothing to do with anybody but me because, and, and, or anyone watching that we have to choose to create our lives. We can tell ourselves any stories we want, but until we really truly understand that your thoughts and your words and your feelings create your reality, you just need to empower yourself to really truly understand that. Well, Rita, I love talking with you every week. <laughs> oh, thanks. I love talking with you too. It's fun. And how do people get a hold of you? Uh, Rita Hickman coaching.com or they can go to Facebook and type in my name or YouTube and go type in my name. I have lots of great content around um, energetic healing advice around toxic relationships. I'm always doing programs. This May is all about um, an energy healing around boundaries and a class around boundaries. And um, so there's always lots of resources and a good community around me. They can just, if they type me in, they'll usually find me. Awesome. And by all means, go to juliemurphy.com. I'm opening up my summer session for group coaching. Um, if anyone wants to join and um, you can always get my book uh, for free, just pay for shipping at awakenyourwealthbook.com. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and Rita on our channels, because uh, the more you guys uh, hit the like and the notification bells and share, then more people can get this information so that we can live more happily on the globe. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye.